Uh, I'm here as a regional uh, This is my job. I, I work full time for Boy Scouts in the summer. I get a direct Camp Bartlett. Have a great time. My, my information, I have some cards on the back there with my contact information. Please, please grab one and use it freely. freely. Uh, we'd love to help you out in anything we can. Uh, I'm excited to be teaching here today with Jeff. And Jeff, I'll turn it over to you as we start here. So. Thank you. Jeff Favaro. I'm a uh, second counselor and uh, state camp vice president. Welcome. Um, let's see, which group am I addressing? Varsities. Varsities. Yeah. Varsities. Wonderful. Who knows where this is? Location. It's mm -hmm. well, it could be anywhere. It could be just about anywhere. Flagstaff. Yeah. Oh, it's in Antelope Island. <laughs> I love Antelope Island, but it has to be between, uh, you know, uh, October or middle October and early uh, April or even maybe late March after that. <laughs> anyway, this, uh, we were out there with scouts uh, for a Klondike Derby uh, a few years back, Madogan District, and it snowed and snowed. But first of all, it blew 60 miles per hour all evening, and then the snow came, and it snowed nine inches almost of snow through the night, and by morning, uh, you know, we had all this snow and the boys were all pumped but the wind came up and it was gone. It looked like this in just a, a few minutes almost. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't convince these scouts, couldn't convince the scouts to, to call it a day. They had brought their Fondack sleds and so they, they drug their Fondack sleds <laughs> through the grass, did the race, the works, and, it, cool. it, and had a great time. Our, uh, our, our purpose today is to talk about activities, and I just want to give you a, a, just a brief overview of activities in the Iran Priesthood, uh, and uh, then Graham's going to talk about some specifics. Uh, on Tuesday, you might recall Brother Harris talking uh, about uh, these uh, concepts that were presented by Elder Bednar. When we think about activity, he suggests that we look at all of our activities through the, the lens of these two questions. What are we doing to foster faith in Jesus Christ? And what are we doing to strengthen the family? And then he goes on to say, our activities and associations do not foster faith in Christ, but strengthen the family. We should be doing that. Um, I'd like you to just take a, a minute and view this video, and then we'll have some more discussion. I believe in Scott. I believe in the goals of the organization. I believe in the power of scouting to bless and enrich lives for good. We've been extremely involved in the scouting program ever since the kids were just babies. As I grew up, I watched my dad take my brothers on scouting at 10. It was just thrilling. When we started having our family, it wasn't a matter of if they would go, it was they were going to do it. The legacy of scouting to me is determination, um, goal setting, accountability. The leadership and the experience you get from doing scouting is phenomenal and I wish uh, every scout and young boy could be able to do that in their life. Scouting has prepared me and our goal for me and who I am now. Scouting has showed me the responsibilities of leadership and being honest and going through your day the best you can. To me, scouting means developing young men to be fantastic men. Scouting is kind of been a tradition in this family. Without scouting, I wouldn't really know a lot of principles that I would need to. I absolutely think that scouting has played a huge part in who Kevin is. He is an amazing leader. He is amazing at um, just helping, helping people. He's always the first one to step in and to serve and to take action. As soon as I met Delight, I instantly knew scouting was very important to the Barbell family. It helped me to realize that that's something that I want for our sons. I want them to be in the scouting program. It goes right along with the gospel. It goes right along with the young men's program. It goes along with the family unit. It will make and help strengthen young men to do better in life. My testimony of the gospel has been strengthened through the scouting program. It's something that's continued growing and developing. I'm a scout master right now, and I think I can take the opportunity to bear my testimony and share with the boys I deal with uh, my testimony to help plant a seed to them or help their testimony grow in all aspects, from boys to men to fathers.
holders to priesthood holders? I think in doing my duty to God, it's not only doing what he has asked in doing the scouting, but to put God first and remember all that he's given you. My grandpa was very big in the scouting. And there's something he told me several times, but I never thought of it growing up. But he told me right before my mission, and I wrote it on the front cover of my scriptures. Quitters are never leaders, and leaders are never quitters. Being able to look back to that and to write it down on my scriptures like he did, I'll always have a little bit of sympathy. And I know that the scouting program is very important. We're well pleased with the kids, and I just know anyone can experience what we've experienced. They really can. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. He has been said, the greatest gift a man can give a boy is his willingness to share a part of his life with him. I appreciate that everyone in this room is, is making that, that contribution, that gift, and sharing their time with these young men and young women in our state. Um, is there any question that that what we experienced in that video supports families. Scouting, the activities of scouting supports families. There's no question you can feel that. You know, what a wonderful uh, legacy that that family has had. And I think that, that many of you could probably share in, in scouting. But to take it a step further, it supports families. The purpose of these activities is to support families. So they should contribute to real growth in the church and contribute to the development of personal conversion, self-reliance, and resilience. And further right from the night we see we could have a, we, it would be wonderful to have a, a, a discussion on resilience, you know. And I've thought about resilience and, and uh, our missionary children who have been out and some of the preparations that, that uh, we've made in our lives and I've seen them make that have helped them to be those resilient people. And I think those are, those are things that they just can't, accomplish on their own without some guidance and direction. Now let's look just for a minute at the, the church handbook and if we could read this, um, maybe uh, Brother Miller, would you mind reading that <coughs> for us? Some direction, we've got a little guidance from our authorities. Quorum leaders and quorum advisors plan activities based on the needs and interests of the quorum members. They make a special effort to reach out to all young men, including those who have recently joined the church and those who are less active. Activities may help young men accomplish their goals in the Duty to God program. Quorum leaders should participate as much as possible in planning and carrying out activities. Quorum <coughs> leaders should participate as much as possible in planning and carrying out activities. I loved, I loved President uh, Sykes' description of advisory leadership, and I support that and sustain him in, in that wholeheartedly. And I, and I think that. Uh, We'll be able to talk a little bit more about that. There are a couple of concepts that we maybe we've drifted from uh, somewhat, and that's one of them is mutual. And uh, I refer you to um, the theme for this year. How many of you are familiar or aware of the theme for the young men and young women in this year, 2014? Come out of Christ and be perfected in Him, and deny yourselves of all ungodliness. Uh, that mean to you? What does that mean to our young men and women? And how can we apply that? The other thing that I think we've drifted from our, our, is the concept of opening exercise. And we're not going to take a, a lot of time here, but I refer you to uh, those sections in the handbook. In fact, all of this material, I'm going to give you a link that will give you all of these things that you can have for future reference. Um, but I, I think that if, and as a presidency, uh, both in the stake and the young men's, we're going to continue to encourage that, that mutual is held and that opening exercise is a part of your weekly experience. I don't envision a better way for these young people to, to experience leadership opportunity than to stand in front of their peers in an opening exercise. And it doesn't have to be long, and it may not be every week. You may miss some weeks, but come on. We talked a little bit on Tuesday with Brother Harris about bundling. I love to bundle. In fact, I'm bundling today because I, I, couldn't, I couldn't find my name badge, but this is my choir name badge. 
But you know, when I was at choir for the 100 year celebration, I helped move the choir and the orchestra on stage for that celebration when nobody knew that it was happening. And that day I wore my scout neckerchief, this very neckerchief, over my black um, uh, attire. And I was, I was, uh, you know, I was acknowledged by so many people that, that love scouting. Um, but bundling, to me, means a, 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 an opportunity for spiritual syn synergism. And we've talked about the things that we're looking for bundling in our activities. And there's probably some things that are missing there, but that gives you a little bit of a, a, a direction on where we want to look and how we want to involve these different uh, parts of our young men's lives in each of our activities. Now this is a, how many of you have been online and, and accessed youth activities, LDS? org youth activities. This is unbelievable. If you haven't been there, I, I recommend it wholeheartedly. I'm just going to take you there for just a second because it is a resource that Brother Pendleton mentioned just, just a minute ago where you can plan with a purpose. You can bring together all of these things in one place. There, there are existing plans. There are, it gives you ideas with activities that have already been, already taken place that you can draw on to, to create your own uh, activity. And um, for the scouting portion of it, and I'll be talking about this a little more in our next session, but the scouting LDS, uh, LDSBSA.org also offers in-depth guides and worksheets for an unbelievable number of um, merit badges and different activities. They'll guide you from day one, you know, through a month's worth of activities culminating, as we always like to do with a, an outdoor or camping experience. But if you look here, um, let me see if I can back up. Look at the type of questions it asks and helps you to build into your activity. And what I was so pleased with, as I pulled up this uh, site the other day and logged in as myself, guess what I saw on the calendar? I saw my warts, young men, young, young women activities. I wondered why I'd been getting emails that was telling me about what was coming up because they have a year, yearly calendar and they've got it online and as a parent I get those, those uh, and I can go here and I can see what they've got planned. It's, it's just amazing. I tell you, if, if you haven't been there, you need to visit and um, look at these options. For example, if you want to have a scouting event or activity, <coughs> here it is. And you go in, and then it'll give you links to, uh, to the uh, scouting uh, resources and how to bring it all together. So I encourage you to do that and to follow up. and, and, and and get these things online where parents and everyone can, can make it a part of their lives. Um, yeah, so when you logged into LDS.org with your login, did it pop up with the activity or is there a page that you look for for that activity if you're worse than it? On the calendar. So you just if you just pull up the calendar mm -hmm. and you can decide whether you're including, uh, it, it comes up as a stake calendar. So all stake activities are there that have been entered and uh, all ward activities that are, that are there. So you can look at your board, and you can exclude the Relief Society, you can exclude, or you can include them all. There's a lot of um, filtering that can be applied there, but it, it, it's just an amazing resource. Just in closing, we, we talked about uh, post-activity reflections the other day uh, with, with Brother Harris and, and, and how to accomplish those, and I recommend it highly um, you know, a, a scouting activity without a post-activity reflection doesn't, <coughs> meet, doesn't meet the requirements of priesthood activities, ironic priesthood activities. But with it, it brings it all together. For example, we were on a, a snowmobile activity, and at one point, uh, this was years ago, I had impression that the activity would be finished. I didn't know why. We had a lot of fun. 
and we've been safe, but it came to me this needed to be completed. And I brought this, with everyone together, I said, you know, guys, I'm not going to tell you why, I know you need to pack it up, it's time to go home. And so we brought it all together, and, and on the way home, in the car, we had a moment to have that reflection, and there was some one-on-one -on -one about what happened, why, you know, Will we ever know? Is there something that might have, you know, did we need to get home before a blizzard came? You know, we, we don't know. We returned safely, but it's a moment in those young men's lives that they'll never forget because they followed the spirit and, and they, they um, followed my suggestion. Um, this is all that I'd like you to think about and take away today. This is the, that's the, the reference to the activities. And uh, <coughs> one more. And there's the link, and you can get this, this uh, PowerPoint as well as all those other links and some others about specific to uh, scouting. Uh, if you if you <coughs> use that URL, it's a little floating <coughs> online. I just want to bear testimony that that um, you know the gift that we are giving is appreciated, and you know, and our young men, young women. Uh, will be better people for the time that we give up. I only hope and pray that we can do it in a way that will bring them to Christ and to bring them home when it's time. And I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Well, thank you, uh, Brother Fair. I appreciate the comments that he shared. I'm going to pass this out uh, as we as we kind of begin our discussion. You just want to take one and then pass it down. Uh, this is a when to file a tour plan. We ask quite frequently, well, when do I when do I file a tour plan? When is it needed to do a tour plan and, and follow those guidelines of the BSA? And, and, and I just want to give that to you. We're not going to talk a whole ton about this, but something to use as a resource. And then you can go submit your tour plan online. Uh, you can actually submit your tour plans online at myscouting.org. You log in your account on the left hand side is a place to submit your tour plan. So, so we're going to do that. Also on traffic trails, there are a lot of resources available to you to, uh, to utilize and enjoy. Today, I, I want to talk a little bit about prepared for life and uh, safe scouting specifically, and how we can be uh, or enjoy safe scouting activities by being prepared. So let's go to the next slide there. Um, on this first picture here, uh, you're going to see see uh, an interesting item here, but it says, uh, it's a picture of Abraham Lincoln and a quote that says, give me six hours to chop a tree down, and I will spend the first four sharpening an axe. I want to ask why, and how does that apply to us as leaders and scouting activities? Why, why four hours sharpening an axe? It makes the work easier. Oh, why? I mean, well, why? What does it, what does it do? If you ever chop an adult axe, you'll find out. It's pretty out. terrible. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it's pretty awful. So you need a sharp axe. You know, they, uh, we had another individual in the first class who said, you know, I, I do painting, it sounds like. And he says, when I paint a house, 80% of my, my work is preparation and 20% is spray. Think about that. The majority of his time is not spent actually spraying the wall with paint, but rather it's in the preparatory period getting ready to paint. You know, as I think about that, I'll bet Abraham Lincoln would, would modify his quote a little bit. He would say four of the six hours would be spent sharpening and resharpening. Yeah, you're, and, and I think, you know, as I looked into this present site, I, that's what I discovered in it too, would be resharpening and sharpening. I really liked that um, Brother Harris talked about uh, training and retraining. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I am learning so much. Despite all the training I've had in the past, I just keep learning more and more. Sure. And, and I keep relearning things that I knew, but I had forgotten that and neglected. So, no, I, I think that's a great point. You know, there was, there is, I, as I was doing some research on this quote, I said, all right, tell me how long it really takes to sharpen an axe. Is it 15 minutes? Is it 20 hours? What does it really take to sharpen an axe? And I've done it in scouts, right? I went online and started looking into it. And there were some algorithms, some people, this math blog that people did, you know, put together. And I, I didn't understand half the things they said. But... The bottom line, what I did understand, is they had identified that you needed to sharpen the axe it were essentially after every tree, and no more than every two trees. So if you had a tree about this size and you were to chop it down, you chop down one, if you failed to stop and resharpen your axe or to regrind the, the tips down or whatever it was, they found that your time cutting the next tree more than doubled. 
every time. So if it took three hours the first tree, it would take six hours the second tree. If it was six hours the second tree, you did not stop to sharpen your axe, it took 12 hours the next tree, and on and on. It, it, was, it was pretty fast and how they, how they figured this out. But, but what a great impact on us that we need to relearn and, and train, and we need to train our kids on safety principles and leadership skills, and uh, it needs to be an ongoing process in our scouting activities. Uh, Elder Cook, uh, we're not going to share the video, but Elder Cook um, shared a video back in 2013, last year, I believe in May, he had a video that talked about the importance of, of following safety procedures in our priesthood activities and scouting activities. He said it is so important to the young men, uh, excuse me, to the, to the brethren of the church, the first presence of Corinth 12, that we follow the principles of safety in scouting and church leadership. So please, just follow it. Uh, follow it in the handbook and other resources that we have as well. Um, scouting activities are a vehicle. Who here owns a vehicle? Owns a car? All right. Let me ask you, why, why do you own that car? Ever try walking? Yeah, ever try walking. You're not going to get any, any, we're less effective. We don't get where we want. You know, point A to point B. We want to get there. We need to get there so we get a vehicle, a car to do it. Well, I'm going to submit that scouting is a vehicle for priesthood purposes and scouting mission. That's what we are. Now, who's ever been in a car when it's broken down? Anybody been in a car? What was your feeling when the car broke down? About that vehicle? Not too happy with it. Not too happy with it, right? We're probably not very happy with it. It was a very effective vehicle. No, it wasn't. Now, the vehicle itself, well, was, that the, was that the issue, or was maybe some maintenance that went into the vehicle that caused I, I mean, it could be whatever it is. But, but think about that. A lot of times, the vehicle itself is pretty good. But sometimes it's our maintenance with the vehicle that may, may erode, therefore causing the car to break down sometimes. So remember, we've got to have oil. You've got to have... The car maintained on a regular basis and checked up. You've got to have a driver in the vehicle that knows where he or she is going and how they're going to get there. And you've got to have kids in the car so that everyone gets to, to their correct place safely. I say scouting the same way. When we follow the trains, procedures, and the principles given to us, scouting becomes a vehicle to fulfill the missions of the church and the USA. Okay. Uh, Safeties are licensed to operate. Stake presidents, season bishops, uh, bishoprics are responsible to oversee the planning of church sponsored activities. Leaders should use good judgment and approve only those activities with the minimal risk for injury or illness. LDS presidency, first, uh, first presidency led of the church. Um, so they say here, we should only approve uh, activities with minimal risk or for injury or illness. Does that mean we don't get to go do those fun, exciting, high adventure activities that varsity scouts love to do? No, we get to. We get to. But then you go to the next one, it says one should not participate in or promote activities when risks are unknown or ignored. And that's from the VSA portion, but it says if we're ignoring the risks, then that's going to lead to the first one that says we should not be doing it. But if we identify the risks and identify how we can minimize risk, then absolutely go to those activities. Prepare and plan with your boys and, and just have them all. So uh, the last one I want to share, if we have the scriptures, we'll open up the scriptures to 2 Nephi, chapter 25, verse 23. And this is going to apply to our, to our discussion here about risks. <coughs> And, and minimizing injury and, and illness in our wrists through pro, uh, proper planning and preparation. Uh, does anybody have that scripture there by chance? Mm -hmm. You're there giving all of so. Okay, the back here. For we labor diligently to write, to persuade our children, and also our brethren to believe in Christ, and to be reconciled to God, for <coughs> we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. Okay, tell me, what, is that, what does that mean to us? What does that mean to you concerning this discussion? We've got to do all we can do first if we expect the Lord to protect us. And the Lord will protect us, and he'll take care of us. But we're expected to make sure we, we do our guidelines, and we're, we're in place, so he can protect us. And his grace can oversee us. His, his missions will always be fulfilled. I know when we always get to the top of King's Speak, if that's our plan, you may not. You may fail in that plan. No matter how well you plan, it may not work. But if you follow the guidelines, the procedures, and follow the promises of the spirits, will, will the grace of God more than double, triple your, your, your desire and effect upon these young men? Absolutely. You'll magnify that. So, something good to think with. Okay, so common offenses. I went and talked to Steve Hoskins. He's the managing director <coughs> of the Risk Management uh, Committee in the church. And we talked a little bit about common offenses and, guide, and safe scouting and whatnot. And first of all, he said, you know what, every, every single person should have one of these or, or know exactly the information within these. Anybody know what this is? Guide to Safe Scouting. Please, it's available online as a PDF document. It's available online as an interactive document. Or just go buy a print copy in the scout shop. But does anybody need a copy of this? 
that does not have one? Because if you don't, take it, please. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it in the back here after we're done, but please take it. Put it with you. But it, it will answer almost every question you have about if an activity is safe or appropriate if you're prepared. But uh, the first thing Steve said is that we are pathetic planners in the church. He said our leaders are terrible planners. Uh, he said we think if we plan on Wednesday for a Friday night camp out, we are planning. No, <laughs> not going to count it, all right? Why? Why does that not work as planning? We missed a lot of steps, right? And I'm going to suggest we're missing two separate key uh, points on this. One is you're missing the opportunity to really impact a youth and teach them skills of planning and preparation. You can't do that over one night to a, to a camp out two days later. Do you know what I mean? I mean? You've got to have some time to return and to report for people to go out and, and look into things and come back and report about what happened. So, so you need that, that opportunity with the youth. And the second thing, you're going to miss some things. You're going to miss safety. You're going to miss uh, maybe needed first aid training. You're going to miss maybe taking the, the first aid kit with you on this backpacking experience or whatever it is. But, but more than likely, you'll probably miss something that would make them more successful in the Okay? So please do that. Uh, Steve Hoskins then said, he said, Graham, I want you to know the Lord will not protect us from our own stupidity. So I said, if you don't believe it, go read the Doctrine and Covenants. Go read the, the, the Scriptures, and we'll find out pretty quickly. The Lord will absolutely magnify our efforts if we want as well. So, so uh, make sure you do that. And then you mentioned the lack of appropriate training by leaders. In our church, we, we have a great, um, we're, we're pretty renowned for, for replacing leaders every other year. Every year in the scout. You get a great scout master, say, well, we're going to pull them out. And we put another great assignment responsibility that does a fantastic job. But it's important that as leaders we don't get into the sense that, well, because I'm only going to be here for a year or two years, there's no reason to go get trained. There's no reason to go spend an extra Saturday and go get outdoor leader skills trained or leader specific trained or even youth protection trained. You've got to be the mindset that sharpening and resharpening our acts or training being retrained is the key to us being successful and guiding kids safely in Scout. Um, uh, there's some great trainings out there for you, uh, several through the Scout office otherwise, uh, but please take advantage of those opportunities. Another one is insufficient supervision for high-risk activities. Those include swimming, boating, shooting, or climbing. Uh, and I'm not going to get into the details of this, but there's a list of, uh, of, of requirements that you should, you should take on yourself if you're going to go swimming, if you're going to go uh, shooting, get NRA training, on and on. But you can look at all those. If you, <coughs> you look here, and if you're doing a high-risk activity, it will direct you to go to myscouting.org to go look and see what you need to do to submit a tour plan to be safely trained and have safe uh, scout activities. Okay? Uh, so please check that out. Non-scouting activities. Um, what do we mean by that? Anybody? We're just having a neighborhood activity. That's right. We're, we're not doing scouting activities. It's just a, a neighborhood activity. Okay, is there any such thing? Uh, we've heard of them. They happen. But should there be any such thing? Is, is there a demarcation between priesthood activities and scouting activities and, and mutual activities? So a lot, of, a lot of times I think as leaders we think, well, scouting doesn't allow us to sure. use motorcycles. Uh -huh. But we're not going to do a scouting activity this week, so we're going to do a church activity this week. Absolutely. So we're not going to be under the scouting. It's not under scouting guidelines. All right, so, so I want to address that. First of all, this is not called the guide to unfund scouting, okay? So, so please note that. That's, that's not what it's for. It's not to ruin your program. But if scouting is truly the activity of the arm of the priesthood, so which it is, and we're to embrace it as the church, there is no differential between a church activity and a scouting activity. Essentially, they're one and the same. Um, follow, uh, follow scouting rules. Uh, you know, Steve Hoskins says, if you don't follow the scouting rules, uh, number one, you're, you're, you're not being very smart because because you're losing that insurance that's given to you as, as being a member of the BSA. And just follow the guidelines and the rules. And the other part of it, if you look at the church guidelines of safety, you look at the scouting guidelines of safety, um, President Sykes, do they, are they going to overlap and be consistent? Entirely, and in fact, every year there's, you know how the First Presidency sends a letter about to be read in sacrament meeting, and they have these official letters under the signature. There's one letter that's sent every single year. They do the same letter every year, and it has, and it's a statement on safe scouting, and it has listed an attachment of the rules of, of, of safety and activities in the church. They really take it seriously. They absolutely do. And so, so that, that letter he's referencing is this one's printed off right here. I have some copies I'll put in the back again if I can take one. But, but in here, but the really interesting thing I did is I, I went and looked at all the guidelines that are in the handbook. I list all the guidelines in the handbook for safe scouting, uh, safe activities. 
And then I compared it to the VSA, uh, Sweet, 16, Sweet 16, a plan for, for the Boy Scouts of America, and they, they, they fit right over each other. This one kind of outlines some general principles, some guidelines. This gave the specifics to make it happen. Could you clarify something you said really briefly? Mm -hmm. If I am a scout leader and I take um, kids on an activity that doesn't meet the rules or, or even that should have had a tour plan and I don't have a tour plan, will I be covered by BSA uh, insurance if there's a problem? So, so, uh, so great question on this and he's just saying I, I go to an activity, I don't, I don't follow all the rules and guidelines, is that right? And I don't submit a tour plan. The tour plan alone, alone probably won't prevent you from getting uh, BSA uh, funding and insurance. But if you if you fail to follow and comply with the rules that, that are applied in that in that tour plan, then yeah, you're gonna, you're going to defund yourself of, of dollar one BSA insurance because and, and ultimately you're going to defund yourself of church insurance as well. You know, and when Steve gets calls and and they say, oh, we're doing this neighborhood activity and, and we had this accident happen, and the first thing he asks is he says, do you follow the guidelines of scouting? Did you follow the safety procedures outlined in scouting the church? And if not, he says, you know what, we're, we're going to have to talk through this a little more seriously before anything happens. So, so it's important that we follow guidelines and safety procedures. You know, brother, and I, I think back to the things that, that I did as a scout leader and, and the fun things that we've done. And, and I would just share the principle with you that, especially in varsity <coughs> scouting, it's supposed to be more high adventure than boy scouting. And venture scouting is supposed to be a step beyond that. And it's, it's very important to, to not take our scouts on the same type of activities that we take our venture. They need to, there needs to be a progression in ability, and they need to have something to look forward to. Um, so trying not to always combine teachers with priests, because priests can do more than teachers. And if you combine them, you're either pushing the teachers ahead of their ability or pulling the, the ventures down to a lower level of, of excitement. At the same time, Sometimes leaders are, they get too afraid to do, they say, well, we can't do uh, a rafting trip because that's just, that's too dangerous, or I can't do a rock climbing. I really want to encourage you to do things that these guys are going to, going to enjoy and they're going to stretch them and are, that have an element of risk, but done totally appropriately. Mm -hmm. And we had a great high adventure several years ago when I was the bishop uh, up at uh, Flaming Gorge. We had a variety of well-planned activities. But I'll just share one thing that I look back on, like, what was I thinking? I love to, I love to cliff jump, go to Lake Powell, and love to climb up and jump. And they ha they have a law now that you can't jump for more than for higher than 15 feet, I think it is. I love to disregard that law. So here we are up at Flaming Gorge, <laughs> and we're looking for boats to see, make sure there's no coast guard, and, and there's a like a a 40 foot cliff and. I lead the way. Here I am, the bishop, and I lead the way, jumping off this cliff. And, and everyone has a good time. We're all having fun. And some of the boys are a little scared, go to a lower level, fine. But I'm the cool bishop, because I can jump off 40-foot cliff. <laughs> then we're driving along, and we see another one. And the boy's like, well, now I've done a 40-foot cliff. There's a 60-foot cliff. I'm going to do that. So he climbs up there, and his dad is in the boat with me. I'm like, well, dad, you know, if you, I'm, I don't, I'm not in support of this, but you know, we let him climb up there and jumps off at, at least 60 feet. He, his estimate was 120. <laughs> I, I'm thinking it was probably 60, but, but way too high, way too high. And, and this was an 18-year-old kid who lifted his dad and he twisted his knee on entry to the water. Thank goodness he didn't you know, break his neck, but you know, he hobbled around for six months on that knee. And I'm like, what, what am I thinking of letting that happen sure. on, on my youth activity? I, I, I should have followed those rules. Absolutely. And you even look at it and say, well, did we even check the bottom? Did we, did we check the water underneath the cliff before we even jumped? I mean, so often I look like, oh, that looks like it's going to be fine and I'll just jump. But, but the reality is we've got to check the water. Go down and see if there's rocks protruding somewhere out of there. We, we don't know. Uh, so it's important to, to check it out and make sure you follow the safety procedures and guidelines. Another person mentioned to me who works for the Forest Service, he talked about Scout groups uh, just set up their own zip lines. You know, kind of fun zip lines. The kids love it. We'll set it up ourselves, make it happen. Is that a good idea? No. no. All right, please don't let those happen. So, right. Keep our kids and our leaders safe. That's important. Uh, next one. Last couple of things on your lack of physical fitness. Get in shape. Uh, get your physical. I can't tell you how many adult leaders come to camp, and everyone's required to have a, a physical, uh, turn in a, a physical, and they say, oh, well, it's just for the kids. I always turn the kids in. Guys, you need a physical. 
so often, you're in a less good physical condition than those kids are. Please come with your physical. So we know that you can participate in scouting activities. Um, if you're planning to go on a 50 mile hike, and, and you, uh, you're not in very physical shape at all, um, and you haven't prepped for the hike in the process, should you go on that hike? You should not. Even if you are the bishop or whatever else, make sure somebody else goes in their place, okay? You need to make sure you're in good physical condition on these hikes. We want them to remember the wonderful experiences they have on that hike, and not that brother so-and-so had a heart attack on this hike. Uh, we want to remember the, the good things and prepare for that. Um, there are two adult deaths in the church in 2013 through scouting activities, and it's because of lack of physical condition. Um, hobo camps. Anybody heard of those? Mm -hmm. All right, I see some last ones at hobo camp. Not a scout. Not a scout camp, basically, right? And, and not just not a scout camp, but not a scout camp that's really not following within the guidelines of scouting in any way. In safety, um, activities, uh, program, whatever it may be, it's not hidden, okay? There's a reason we encourage you, not just we as a council, but the church encourages you and tells us to go to scout camps. And that can be scout camps for the Boy Scouts or high adventure camps for the, the varsity adventure scouts as well. I'll trade them through, get a, get a jump start your program by going to a, to a high adventure camp and do your own thing the next year. And then when you get the new rotation boys in, jump starting with this uh, high adventure program at a camp, can go otherwise. Um, but they said in the church, we're four to ten times more likely, at a minimum, to incur serious injury at, at a hobo camp versus a scout camp. What's an example of a hobo camp? I've never heard of that. Sure, so, so give me an example. I, I can give you one, but do you guys have an example of a hobo camp? Well, our, our scout, our Lord Scout troop went to, um, oh, what's the name of it? Skull Valley? Yeah. Mm -hmm. North, east, <coughs> northwest portion of Utah, and and just camped out. Mm -hmm. uh, they had all these things planned to do, and really did none of them. Right. And so, unfortunately, none of the boys came back. Well, they came back with one merit badge each. Sure. But it was um, just not a good experience. So, so for for the scouts, maybe you know, hey, we're gonna go spend a week by a lake. I have this really cool, week, you know, lake that we're gonna go by, and they spend a week just sitting by a lake, and maybe doing some external hikes and fishing a couple times. But but those boys probably didn't get as, as rich of an experience as they could have otherwise. With their high adventure camps, maybe it's I'm gonna go to Bear Lake to a cabin, we're gonna, we're gonna play some video games, we'll avoid them for a day, we'll you know do some other things. That's probably a hobo camp. It's really not following within the guidelines and purposes of the priesthood and or scouting. But are you saying that a hobo camp, by definition, is an extended summer camp? In place of going to a in, in place, scout. right? In place of your high adventure, you know, a, a real, real. I mean, it's kind of your week-long experience. The, the super activity of your summer. That's not it's super not activity. Absolutely. Scout, okay. Absolutely, yeah. Something along those lines. So that's that's what they say. And for our, for our high adventure groups, the varsity teams, adventure crews, we want you to go out and do your own own uh, experiences as well. Uh, I mean, no question. We want you to do your own extended ones. Just make sure they're they're following in the guidelines to stay scouting. So we're not saying that hobo camps are bad. Like our priest retreat would be a hobo camp, right? We no, had no. a three day. No, no. that's what we say. Go within the guidelines. I mean, if you're following within the guidelines, you're good. But if you're if you're just kind of worse, your spiritual activity. He's saying we get guys together, we're gonna find you at a camp, you know. For so just say a poorly planned, a poorly planned, planned activity camp. camp. That's gonna be a hobo camp, and the church says, uh, -uh we don't want any of those. And, and, and really, they, they encourage you as well. In this letter, they say if, if you're going to be doing activities like whitewater rafting and rappelling, otherwise. We would encourage you one of two things, either go to a, to a, a Boy Scout camp, you know, a high adventure camp, or they say get a certified guide to help you know, those experiences. The BSA, we offer trainings to certify your individuals, guides, and otherwise. But that, that's kind of what it says, is follow the guidelines, follow the rules. So, um, uh, buckle up. This is, this is the car, and I'll finish up here. I know we're down to the last second here, but this is a car, I direct Camp Arlo. This is a, a, a picture of a vehicle that was shown to me. I know there was a scout master that went out to the Minnetonka Caves for the hike day activity. He said, I'm going to go. We signed a permission form, no problem. He came back and said, Graham, do I need to report this to anybody? I said, oh my goodness, what happened? He went and proceeded to tell me what happened. I asked if, if everyone was okay and whose vehicle it was, if it was somebody passed on the road. He said, no, that's my vehicle. <coughs> I had myself, another leader, and six boys in that vehicle. Now, brother, if they would have decided that, you know, we, we've got to go 30 miles to Minnetonka Caves, and we've got seven you know, Let's say nine people and squeeze one more in. What would have happened in this experience? You don't even want to think about it. But, but I know this experience went all the way up to the first presence. I looked at it and said, they followed the rules. They're so great. Because that, that's, that's so important when we do that. So I'll go to the next one real quick and then we'll wrap it up here. 
Uh, safety resources, there's a plethora of them. Please look at them, use them. Otherwise, uh, include guidance day scouting, the church handbook, our round table. First Thursday of every month, we'll go over procedures, uh, programming, safety, other things, activity permission slips. Uh, the last thing I want to highlight is on safety.lds.org. That's a place I would encourage you to go check out. Much like Brother Favero's uh, website talking about youth and the church, this is a great resource to leaders about making sure they're, they're doing safe scouting. There's interactive programming in there. Um, but the last most important thing I think is that we realize that as members of the church we have the priesthood and we have the gift of the Holy Ghost to guide us. Brother Favero in his comments as he closed up his, his session, there were snow buildings, is that right? And as there were snow buildings, what happened at the end of the, end of the day? The middle of the activity. I don't know where it was, but what happened? What do you feel? He got an impression that they should be done. Okay, they followed the safety guidelines. They were safe. They were in line. They were perfect. But he got an impression that said it's time to get Please follow the Holy Ghost and the Spirit in your activities. In the book of 2 Nephi, chapter 32, uh, verses 3 through 5, it talks about angels speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. Now the words of Christ will tell us all things that we should do. And if we don't, if we don't understand them, it's because we ask not. And we're not seeking the right places. And then in verse 5 it says, For behold, again I say unto you, that if you will enter by the way and receive the Holy Ghost, it will show unto you all things that you should do. So I would leave us with that today, that, that as we move forward in our activities in the priesthood and scouting, uh, that we go forward and save. We go forward, forward powerfully, and we go forward with the Holy Ghost and our constant guidance. And as we do those things and follow the guidelines and listen to the prophets, I know that the Lord will protect us. He will help us magnify His work on this earth. He will help us magnify His children and work and help them be built to the great nations, our great, great fathers, and uh, great members of the community and church. I know this will be true. I know that the Lord will protect us and guide us in these activities. I say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.